Hi guys, welcome to Lion Brew. Today we are making a smash beer. Smash beer stands for single malt, single pot, and uh, essentially, like it's it's just a good beer for beginners who are just starting out brewing to get to know the flavour profiles of the base malt or the hops. Uh, so anyway, base malt is pretty like self-explanatory. It's your base malt, so you're going to have base malt in all your beers because you need it to uh, for all the enzyme properties to break down the sugars when you're doing the mash to actually make the beer, uh, the sugars in the beer or the, the starch in the beer turn to sugars to be fermentable. So without base malt, you don't really have a beer. So every beer needs its base malt. Uh, today we're using Maris Otter. I don't know if you can see that, it's a bit small today. Uh, I'll bring you closer in a minute. Uh, yeah, Maris Otter, that's my base malt. It's my favourite. I've tried a pale, I've tried extra pale. I actually just like so it's got a little bit more flavour, in my opinion. So it just makes a slightly nicer beer, especially with the smash, as there's only the one uh, malt. And um, the hop today is Chinook. Uh, Chinook's my favourite hop. I've done these before. Um, only reason I'm doing it mainly to build up my stocks because I've moved house and I've only got one beer ready to drink and one beer ready to bottle. So pretty slim pictures at the minute, unless I want to buy a beer and I don't. <laughs> so yeah, Chinook's my hop. Uh, basically what I do, I put it in the top there. You get an aroma and a flavour and a bitter addition. I start with the aroma, it gives me some IBUs. Then I go to the flavour, it gives me more IBUs. And then to get the IBUs I want, the bitterness I want, I put in the 60 minute addition. Uh, for this one, it's given me about 43 IBUs, um, should give me a nice American Pale Ale smash beer. There we go, smash, single malt, single hop. And like, if you're like me, you get your, your can of craft beer, and you're looking on the back, and it's got all these descriptors, you know, uh, uh, tropical, mango, pine, uh, floral, all sorts of stuff like that, you know, and... Then you look at the hop list and there's just, you know, five or six different hops in. How, how are you supposed to know? How, I don't know what's in this. I don't know what's in that. Like What this beer does is it takes one of those hops off that back of the can, which you have no idea what it tastes like. And you put that in the beer on itself and all the flavours from that hop are going to be in this beer. And you'll know then what the hop does and then next time you make a, a smash you could try uh like citra for example that's a good one and then you've got two smash beers you can compare the beers because obviously you'll keep the base malt the same and then that way the flavors in the beer the only difference will be from the hops you can also keep the yeast the same but uh yeah that way you will know the hot profile. It's a pretty good way, you know, to make an easy, tasty beer and also, you know, you learn. And then next time you might decide, I did like Chinook and I did like Citra. Maybe they'd be nice together. So what you do is you make the same beer, but you add both hops in. Whoa, maybe in the same, same amounts. You know, like you could have 10, 10 grams of Chinook, 10 grams of Citra, you could have 20 of Citra. You could, you know, you can dry hop them if you want, you can do whatever you want. But from your smash beer, you have found the basic flavour profile of each hop and you can use that in your future beers. So anyway, that's the smash beer, the basic idea of it, you know, you just getting to know the ingredients. Very simple, very easy, you know, no, no faffing around, no, you know, Close transfer oxygen dinghy jigs and whatever. It's just a beer. Also, you know, if, if you are still a beginner, you get another brew under your belt. You know, you you mash, you get your whole system going. Like some people like to use three vessels, some people use an all-in-one. I'm just using my um, pots and pans at the minute because it works for me. Everyone's got it different, so let's get. The brew one. Okay, so the mash water's on. Actually a little bit too hot, but whilst that's cooling down a bit, let's get 
my ingredients weighing out. So I'm doing two kilos of mouse otter today. I got my chinna cops, three lots of ten ki uh, kilos, blimey, three lots of ten grams. I'll get those ready and my yeast. Obviously, you don't have to weigh this. It's just a pack. Chuck it in right at the end. So let's get weighing. Right, that's all the malts weighed up, ready to go in. Time to get the hops on. 10 grams of each. Get the old drug dealer scales out. Go on, have a whiff. A bit too much there. Naughty, naughty. Do so ten grams of that one. Oh, it actually smells a little bit like weed. These ones, these are chinook cops, uh, BBC Cryo. I think it's Cryo hops. Apparently, they got a bit less. Plant matter in. Oh, I say that's pretty dead on. Yeah, it's a bit less plant matter. So they should be nicer than just standard Chinook hot pellets. They do smell good. Definitely smell the part. Oi. Let's see. Yeah, those are good. Right, so that's the hops weighing out. See what the mash water's saying. Stick him in. We want it at about seventy-two degrees today. Let's see, shall we? Because uh, oh yeah, seventy-two. Because you want the mash about sixty-five, and um, when you add. The malts to the water it will cool the water a bit so you'll get that desired temperature so we at 70 Ooh, what's that boiler we had a new boiler in my house lovely look at that thing oh gorgeous so where are we at with this 71.8 swirl that around a bit Yep, there we go. I'd say that's dead on enough. Right, that's all the grains in. Give it a good old stir. Make sure there's no uh, dough balls in there. Like dry bits. We want all of that liquid. Get into all of the grains. And convert in that starch into sugars. Ooh, look, there's, a, there's a ball there. Look at that. Smash them on the side. Come out. Right, let's give that a little probe, see what temperature is that. What are we doing? What are we saying? Yeah, so we want it about between 63 and 67, really. That'd be a good, good range. 65's bang on, I'd say. Maybe 64. Right. Yeah, 63. Oh, a bit higher. Still climbing. Slow down. 66. Let's go over here. Yeah, that'll do. 66.5. There we are. Not wrong with that. Might stick a little tiny bit of cold in, which I always keep aside. Just drop it slightly. Give that a good old stir still. Make sure there's nothing. Yeah, look, I see some there. 
Look at that. Smash him up. It's my poor mixing today. I'm trying to film it, I need to get a tripod so I can do it all in one smooth motion. But that's my problem, not yours. So here we go, mix it up, mix it, mix it. I think we got all the bring the dough balls out. Let's see. Lovely. I stick the lid on it and uh, give it an hour. All right, it's one hour later. Coming to sparge this mash now, so got the sparge water here heated up. That's that clicky sound you can hear, the metal expanding. So I've got to get this into here and then drain it through this tubing back into the big pot and then pour this into there to rinse the rest of the sugars on the grain. So give me a minute whilst I pick this out. It's kind of hot. I'll get my gloves. See how that works. And again, I need to get a tripod or something, or maybe an assistant to my camera. But uh, I'm not paying them. So, it's like a giant tea bag, instead of tea, it's sugary malt grains. Okay. Give it a spin, turn it up, squeeze out as much as you can. Fantastic. That's what we've got left at the minute. Nice golden colour. And that's the grains ready to be sparged. Right. We'll pour the sparge water in. What this is doing, getting all those sugars off the grains. And rinsing them off. See, there's other ways to do this but with brewing a bag method it's a lot simpler because you don't have to take any care not to get the grains into the, the warts warts wart, 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 i don't know how you say it it's coming out there There. Just got to lift the bag up a bit because it blocks the hole. It'll come up faster. There we go. Nice flow there. All that sugary water's coming out. Ready for the boil. Sparge all done. Time to boil. So, once this is up to boiling, we've got the hops ready. Already weighed out, so just gotta wait. You know, make sure you watch this bit because if you don't, it tends to bubble up and boil over, especially with the lid on. Even though the lid helps it boil faster, but yeah, it will bubble up, spilling down there. You get sticky, sugary, burnt-on water, and also less beer. Because it's spilled. So, 
what I do, where's my thermometer? I get my thermometer, stick this in the gap, and I come back every few minutes. When it's about 85, 90, then I just keep my eye on it. No boil overs yet, so far. Now, uh, whilst that's boiling up, it's time to get rid of the grains. These are done now, spent grains. Nothing more needed with these. If you've got chickens, you can feed it to them. Apparently they like it. Chuck it in the bin. What I like to do is stick it in the compost. And one day, when I figure out where I'm gonna plant my hops, one day the compost will be growing hops for new beer. So, take that out with you. My lovely garden. Oh, nice day. I not believe it was foggy earlier. Yeah, so, straight into the compost. And one day, probably here, I'll have a nice hot plant, maybe two. Let's have a look at this. Right, so, ooh, 94 there, so the boil is almost well, the water is almost boiling. And what we need to do now, you can see it coming there to the surface, starting to roll. Still a little bit of waiting to do. What we've got to do is get all the equipment sanitized, ready for fermenting. So I've got my fermenter here. There's this is Hapoir. My previous beer, not quite ready. I think it just stopped this morning. Yeah, it stopped bubbling this morning. So it's gonna be ready to bottle in a few days. I can give it a couple more just in case. Uh, big box of crap. I think you'll find accumulate lots of bits and bobs. So here's my turkey baster. Big one. Hydrometer in that there to measure the alcohol or the, the gravity. Alright, that's all in there now. Gloves on for this bit because sanitizer is quite acidic. Not not too acidic, but it will make your hands a bit sore. Or well, they make mine sore anyway. Oh sensitive boy, sensitive skin. Yeah, give it a good old mix around, get it all up the sides. It's already been cleaned, so it just needs sanitizing all up the sides of fermenter. And on the lid as well, get it all in there. So nothing here. Once once we've boiled and then cooled down the wort, nothing's there to contaminate your beer. Alright, so sanitizing done. And I think the boil, yeah, just about done. Just been lumbered with the child. That's all right. I've got eight hands. What you have to do in your hand. So, all of these hops are the same amount. So we chuck one of these in now. This one's going to be for an hour. So we do 50 minutes on the timer. And then we'll throw the next one in. 10 minutes and then we'll turn it off. The last one's a hop stand. So, yeah, good boil there. Chuck them in. Oh yeah, look at that. Bubbling up, just give it a good stir. Make sure it doesn't boil over. There you go, all in. Some people like to put their hops in bags, but I think you get more flavor when you let it pre. And then I just use a big bag to fill it out when I'm finished pouring it into the fermenter. Just pour it through a filter. And that suits me. Alright, so come back to this one in 50 minutes. 15 minutes up, time for the next hot addition. So this one's for flavour. It's going for 10 minutes before we turn it off. Okay. Stir around. Alright, see you in 10. Right, that's the boil done. I've already pre-cooled this down 
to 75 degrees. And then we add the hop stand edition. So these, well, this edition of hops isn't gonna be boiled. So you won't get that bitterness. You'll get a little tiny bit. Can't get away with that, but basically what this one does is because it's not being boiled, you're not losing all those lovely oils with the boiling process, like volatile, you know, evaporating into the air. So they'll be in there lovely. Steeping away, I'll give it 30 minutes to an hour, depending on when I can bother to get up. But there, uh, yeah, just leave that in there. Keep the lid on it, and that'll keep the temperature up. And then it's time to cool it properly ready to put in the fermenter. All right, hop stand done. So I've added my bottles for my ghetto cooling. So yeah, this one, recycle me. Yep. Done, green. We're green here in this household. Not just cheap. All right, so. Getting this now cooled to about 20 degrees max, where we at now? 37 there. So yeah, once this is down, it's in an ice bath as well. Right? Shouldn't take too long. Once this is down to 20, we'll pour it all in here, filter those hops out, and then just add the yeast. That's it, done. So, Another 10, 15 minutes of waiting, I guess. And uh, whilst I'm waiting, right up the brew day. Always right up these brews. So you've got a big old, big old book here. Always right up your brews, because if you ever make a good one, you want to know what you did. You know, it's nothing worse than forgetting what you to write it down and then not knowing how you made that amazing beer. But yeah, so it's my chinic smash. I'm gonna call it chin smash from now on because it's easier. And when I label the bottles, I like to know what they are. Don't wanna just put smash. Um, yeah, so yeah, write it all down. Keep a record, I've got some in here. Silly names. Some of them, some of them are real good beers, but other ones are not. Generally, I'll put like a little star. That was good. Oh, my blueberry milkshake. That was a good one. One first place in the competition, actually. But uh, I didn't actually like it that much. So personal taste comes into it a lot. Like my quad. This one's a good one. I need to star you. Because damn. That was a good beer. I've still got two left. That's my last home brews. See, many, many... Many beers. I've been brewing for a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, beer notes. Keep it in my little book. Keep it safe. Once I've got rid of the, well, once I've run out of pages in this book, I'll keep it somewhere. Got to be a bookshelf, you know. That's where you keep books, isn't it? Um, and start a new one. Been nine brew for a long time. <laughs> Have another look at this. Oh, nope, still above 30 on that. Let's try the good thermometer. The glass one's not very accurate anymore. I just use it as a something I can submerge by accident because this one will die if I put it in water. 30, oh yeah, 35 still. Yeah, another 10 minutes, so I'll come back to you. Okay, so my beer's all cooled down. <clears throat> Time to filter it. Let's pour it straight into the fermenter. Back here, we'll strain out all the hops. Gunk. There we go. 
a green glow. Or horrible, depending on how you want to look at it. Once all the hops are filtered out, this is your final beer. Looks a bit murky here, it's all good. What we need to do now is take a reading from the hydrometer. And what this does is it calculates, well, once it's finished, the reading we get here and the reading on the finished beer will calculate and it will give us the ABV. So we'll know how strong our beer is. You don't have to do this technically because it will still ferment without it, but you'll just have a mystery strength beer. And also when you ferment, it's good to check that it's stopped fermenting. So if you do a reading after two weeks and then you check it the next couple of days and if the reading's the same, it means it stopped fermenting. Aiming for one four nine. I think I've just about got it. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm, one fifty. I say slightly over, which is well, ever so slightly over, so slightly stronger, but also depends what it um, ferments down to. Pour this away, well not away, back in, don't want to waste it, and let's get the yeast in. Trust me, there's five, the USA will yeast, so it should be nice and clean. Oh, it's got a good fermentation range as well, 17 to 28 degrees Celsius. So, shouldn't give us too many off flavours if it's over temperature, and because it's a bit cold at the minute. It shouldn't get too low and stop fermenting. Right, there's that. Lovely. All in there, that's the yeast. I'll give this a good stir. I'm going to get lots of air, which is why there's holes in this paddle, by the way. You want lots of air in, in your beer. It helps the yeast to multiply. It makes it nice and healthy. And uh, the quicker the yeast colonizes as well, the um, less chance of anything else getting in there and like making your beer bad. They like to compete. The old, the old bugs, wild yeast, etc. Still get some of those in, even though you sanitise. You know, just from the air, you know. Very, very easy to get a, a poor beer. All right, nice load of bubbles there. I say that will do. That's just ready to ferment. See you in two weeks, beer. Okay, yeah. Lid on, air bubbles are in, air locked. A little bit of liquid there. Let's all the, uh, the gases out when it ferments and stops anything bad getting in. On the side here, we got the little um, thermometers. One goes down to 10, which is my new one. The old one only went down to 18. No good for lagers, which need a lower ferment temperature. You can see here it says 16 to 18, so... Oh, a bit of 14 there as well. So, I think 17 was the lowest that the, the packet recommended, so not bad. I've got my brew mat underneath. Let's keep a little lift. There you go. Little heat mat, which will give it some heat. It's cold in the kitchen. 
As you can see from the beer I've already got fermenting, 20 degrees is the room temperature, so not bad. I'll check on this one tomorrow, make sure it's bubbling away, but apart from that, I won't touch this for two weeks. Okay, it's been a long day, brewing. Sun's coming down, as you can see, she's lying to me. Uh, that's a smash beer, all in fermenter, ready for two weeks' time when I bottle it, hopefully, two weeks. Beer, I think. Had a, one of my last quads. 12.2%. You can see that. Brewed 31st of January 2021. Yeah. Two years old for this beer, but it is a big, strong one. So it needs lots of aging. Look at that, crystal clear. And there's lots of fizz in this as well, this is a Trappist style. I always keep the end in the bottle. That's where the yeast is, stuck to the bottom. You don't really want to drink that. Look at that, look at that colour. Wow. That's what homebrew can do. Let us sit. Oh yeah. Damn, that's amazing. Two years in the bottle, that. So, patient waiting game is homebrewing, but if you've got the patience, good stuff out of it. I'd have to re-brew this one. Anyway, getting uh, sidetracked. Ooh, feel it already. Blimey. <laughs> Some more. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. It's supposed to be a sipper, but well, I can't sip them. Wet the whistle. So, yeah, if you liked my video, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, there's the bell in the corner, I think. Is it that corner? That one? I don't know. So yeah, like and subscribe. Um, more videos coming up. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>